So, you remember the Seagate ST-157A, right? Of course you remember the Seagate ST-157A. I made the most recent Seagate ST-157A video only three videos ago when I decided to disassemble the Seagate ST-157A and see what was wrong in its metallic guts. But, you know what's better than a Seagate ST-157A? That's right. Two Seagate ST-157As. That's right, I inexplicably acquired a second working drive that totally didn't come from an impulse purchase on eBay. So this video was originally supposed to feature the Connor CP-341, but for whatever reason, the Connor low-level formatting tool just seems to crash on startup no matter what hardware or software configuration I've used. I've tried three different versions of DOS and two completely different computers. So instead, our test subject is going to be the Seagate drive. Now, I mentioned before that already works. And yeah, let's just go ahead and boot it. That is already turned on, so let's just do that. And listen to that rev up. Okay, and there's the screen. Oh, hi camera. And there's the drive detected right there on the post screen. Let's get the camera to adjust a little bit more. There we go. So in short, in the early days of IDE, or Parallel ATA as it's more commonly known as, actually, is it more commonly known as that? I don't know. But in the early days of the interface, a lot of drives actually came with their own low-level formatting utility, or at least so-called low-level formatting, that in short, we're meant to replicate the functionality of the low-level formatting utilities that existed on the MFM and RLL drive that existed before. So, let's just do that. And I already swapped out the floppy drive, or not the floppy drive, the floppy disk. And as you can see, that is the Connor formatting tool there, but it doesn't seem to want to work, so instead we are going to use the Seagate formatting tool because we have a Seagate hard drive hooked up. SGAT FMT4 and this will start up the tool. The drive is already verified, completely working. I did an error scan beforehand. So the way that we want to do this is that we just press the down arrow until we come across the drive that we have, which as you can see is the ST157A. Now we just press enter and let's do a combined format and verify. Let's see, do you want to hard copy the errors found? There is no printer hooked up, so no. You have selected the format drive function, all data will be erased. Are you sure that you want to continue? Considering how the drive was already pre-wiped before I got it, might as well. Press yes, so why? Extensive read-write pattern testing. Considering how this is Seagate's own tool, might as well. Number of patterns to test, let's just do three. Uh, let's do T to test the interleave. Okay, and seems like, yep, optimum interleave is one. Head skew, let's just press return for current. Cylinder skew, just current. And now it's gonna start low level formatting and if you actually look over here, you can see that it's just going through each read-write head one at a time. Oh wow, one hour? Okay, this might take a little while, so... 
yeah, probably just gonna throw some music over and fast forward it. In Seagate's formatting tool, it seems like it has a kind of realistic depiction of what's going on inside the drive. Those three brown bars, those are meant to represent the three platters inside the Seagate ST-157A, with the blinking arrows being the read-write heads. I honestly think it's pretty neat to be able to see what's physically happening as the program runs. As you can see, the program does its job. The so-called formatting tool does appear to do some sort of diagnostics work on the drive and it actually ended up catching a surface error that was missed by Spinrite while I ran it the day before. I'm not 100% sure if this is doing the same sort of work as the actual low-level formatting utilities used by MFM hard drive controllers, but based on how it did ask to specify some more advanced details such as the interleave and some angle stuff. I'm pretty sure that's at the very least more of a hybrid program between the low level formatting utilities of old and more modern drive diagnostic tools like Seagate's own C tools diagnostic suite. Okay, and now that we have the low level format finished, let's just top things off with Recreating the partitions using FDisk. 
So as you can see, the low level format completely wiped the partition table. So this drive is effectively fresh from the factory now, if that's really what the low level, low level format tool is actually doing. So let's create a new DOS partition. Let's just make it the maximum available size. Insert DOS disk in A. And the partition should be created now, so let's just wait for the computer to finish restarting. I don't know why the lines are printing so slowly to the screen. It might have something to do with this video card, or it might just be some weird configuration thing in the BIOS that I forgot to change. Either way, it doesn't matter all that much. The computer still works as expected. Okay, and now let's open up this again, make sure that our partition was created. And there it is. So now, let's just format C. And yes. And now we are doing a high level format. And actually it seems to be going a little bit faster than when I tried formatting it off screen before the low level format. It might maybe since the drive has effectively been zeroed out, it maybe doesn't have as much to do as far as like wiping things clean. Cause I know that with DOS, unless you specify a quick format, it's always gonna do a full format. I don't know, either way, it seems to be working pretty well. And contrary to popular belief, low level formatting a hard drive does not destroy the drive, but, and I really want to stress this, but you have to, one, use the tools supplied by the manufacturer themselves. Don't just use some generic so-called low-level formatting tool, and two, make sure you back up your data. This drive, I already got like pre-wiped from the seller, so I didn't worry about any data that could have been lost, but I made sure that whatever I was using to format this drive, it came from Seagate themselves. But, anyway, let's just do one last thing and install DOS to the drive. System transferred. And now, to prove that the drive still works, I have taken the, drive, the floppy disk out and you can see that there is no disk in the drive anymore. So let's just do the good old control alt delete. There's the hard drive being detected. And there we go, DOS has booted, MS-DOS version 5.0. And that's the video, thanks for watching, and if you like this sort of content, feel free to maybe leave a like and subscribe. I am currently at 69 subscribers as of the recording of this video, and I'm hoping that maybe I can reach 75 by the time the year ends. And until next time, I'm out. See ya.